So I want to talk about seven, because uh, seven's a bit of a weird number. I mean, it's weird because it's hard to work out when something is divisible by seven. If you've ever tried to do that, you go, oh, is that seven times table? Oh. So I wanted to show you one weird trick uh, to work out if something's divisible by seven. You do need to know your seven times table a little bit, up to like, say, 100. But then if you have a larger number, this is a useful trick. So we'll pick a number. 434. Is it divisible by seven? I don't know, just looking at it, I can't tell. So this is my one weird trick. You split it up into two parts. I'm going to remove the last digit and we've got the rest of it is 43 and the last digit as four. And the trick is this, five times the last digit, so it's gonna be five times four, plus the rest, 43. That's the little calculation I'm gonna do. What have I got? I've got 20 plus 43, it's equal to 63. If that answer is divisible by seven, your number was divisible by seven. And it is. That is what, nine times seven? So I now know 434 is divisible by seven. That's the little trick. It works the other way as well. If that had failed the test, if it was not a multiple of seven, then the original number is not a multiple of seven either. Uh, you can even do this Repeatedly, if you've got a really big number, you can actually do this a couple of times. Let's say you got a bigger number, 6,468. Is that divisible by seven? I don't know. I'm gonna use my trick. So what I can do is I take the last digit, eight, go multiply that by five, and I add on the rest, 646. What have I got here? 40 plus 646, 686. I still don't know if that's divisible by seven, but I can repeat the process. So I'll just go again, take the last digit, so six times five, and add the rest, the 68. What have I got? 30 plus 68, it's 98. Do you know what, I could stop there. I know 98 is divisible by seven. Uh, but just for fun, let's take it one extra step further. Maybe you don't know 98 is divisible by seven. Last digit is eight times five plus the rest, which would just be a nine. And that would be 40 plus nine is 49. Yeah, I'm confident that's divisible by seven. It's seven squared. And therefore my original number, which was the big number, the 6,468, it's a multiple of seven. What do you do if you do the process to 49? Oh, okay, let's find out. I don't know, I haven't done it. <laughs> let's find out. 49, uh, okay, last digit is a nine times five plus the rest of it, which is just the four. And now what am I gonna get here? Nine times five is 45. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I've got that. Uh, plus four, oh, it's 49. All right. Oh dear, we've got <laughs> ourselves into a loop. These numbers can get larger because I'm adding with this test, I'm adding a number on, so they kind of get big. Um, there is an alternative version we could do, which might be more useful because the numbers get smaller instead. I do split it up again, there's the 43 and the four. I take the rest, as I was calling it, the 43, I subtract two times the last digit this time. So this time it would be 43 minus eight, which would be 35. Is that divisible by seven? Yes, it is. Therefore, my number was. Uh, so that's a, a subtracting version of it, which might be more useful in some situations, maybe less useful in other situations. Do you want to hear why it's true? You might want to try and work out why it's true, actually, um, but I am going to show you. So if you want to work it out, you know, make sure you do that. I'm going to show you how it works. Why is that true? So if I write a number, I could write a number like this as 10x plus y. Y is the last digit, and this 10x is the rest, or the x is what I was calling the rest. That's just a, a different way of writing down a number. So I want to know if this is divisible by seven. I hope you would agree that if, if this is divisible by seven, five times the number is divisible by seven as well. I think that's true, isn't it? Yeah. So let's multiply this by five. So I'm going to multiply this by five. So what am I going to get? 50x plus 5y. So I might want to know, is that divisible by seven? I'm going to split this up in a different way. I'm going to have a little bracket here. And I'm going to have x plus 5y in a bracket. And what's left over? I guess it's all the x's I haven't used. It's 49x left over. So I want to know, is this divisible by 7? 49x is definitely. I know that's definitely divisible by 7. So really, the only thing that I need to ask is, is that bracket is divisible by 7? But that bracket is my test. 
this is my five times the last digit plus the rest. So if that bracket passes the test, if it's divisible by seven, the original number was divisible by seven. And if it's not, then the original number wasn't either. Is it ever important to know if a number is divisible by seven? I, I'm sure I can think of situations where you would need to find if something is divisible by seven. I mean, it's more useful to know when things are divisible by um, four or two or six is kind of useful. And seven is less useful if, unless you go into a, like a restaurant and you've got seven people and you want to split the bill, you know, that kind of thing. So well, I can't imagine. Rugby, maybe converted tries in rugby, or or a touchdown with a field goal with a conversion, a touchdown with a conversion, seven points. Yeah. Look at my face. Look how blank my face is now. I have no idea what you're talking about. But maths is good, isn't it? Now that we've seen a test for the divisibility of seven, maybe it's nice to do a recap of some of the tests for smaller numbers, and they might be useful. Keep them in your pocket and then you'll know them. Right, how to tell if your number is divisible. Seven, we know. We've now got a test for this, and it was the five times last digit plus rest. Awesome, tick. One, well, everything's divisible by one. Okay, I'll just write that in there, everything. Let's do the easy ones next. Um, divisible by two, even, right? Even numbers, but another way of saying even is they end with a zero, a two, a four, or an eight, and then you know it's or a even. six. Oh, all right. And five is an easy one as well, isn't it? Uh, ends with a zero or five. Yep. And ten's an easy one. Ends with a zero. Cool. Those are the easy ones. The next easiest test, I think it's divisible by nine. I've actually done a video about divisible by nine, a trick that can check your arithmetic. Uh, but I think this is something that everyone should know. Before we called it casting out nines or the rule of nine. And the test for this is something called the digit sum, where you add up all the digits. And if the digit sum is divisible by nine, tick, the original number was. Let's just do an example. I'll steal the example I did before, right? 6,468. So the digit sum would be adding up the digits. Six plus four plus six plus eight. What have I got there? Uh, 10, 16, 24, which I guess means it's not divisible by nine. So I failed the divisibility test, but it does pass the test for three. The test for three is the digit sum again. This time, if the digit sum is divisible by three, the original number was divisible by three. 11, shall we have a look at the test for 11? That's the alternating sum. It's the same idea, really. You alternate the plus and minuses. Let's do that example to show you what I mean. Uh, so I had this number again, the, the 6,468. Start with the six, you subtract the four, you add the six, you subtract an eight. So you keep plus and minusing the digits like that. If that's zero or a multiple of 11, it passes the test. What have I got here? It's a two and eight minus an eight is a zero. That's okay, so if it's a zero, it passes the test. That means it's a multiple of 11. My uh, number was a multiple of 11. All right, so what have we got left? The next easiest one is six. How do we know if it's divisible by six? Well, all you do is you apply two tests. Does it pass divisibility by two and divisibility by three? If it does, then it's divisible by six. So you have to pass two tests, divisibility by two and three. What about my example I've been using, the 6,468? Yeah, I mean, it passed the three test and it passes the even test, so it's divisible by six. Uh, you can do the 12 the same way. So it just needs to pass divisibility by three and four. Oh, I haven't done four, so I should mention it. Uh, four, what is the divisibility by four test? You look at the last two digits. I must use, let's use my example here. I just care about the 68. I really don't care how big this number is either. It's just, it's just the 68 I care about. And then is that divisible by four? You might think, but is that hard working out if that's divisible by four? And I like to do, um, can I divide by two twice? Is it doubly even? So is it, can I divide by two? And is that even? I can divide by two again. Uh, so if I did that, 68, is it doubly even? It'd be 34. And then yeah, that's even, which would be a 17 if I halved it again. That passes. And for eight, this is the, apart from seven, I say eight is the, maybe the harder one. 
it's the last three digits. Don't care how big the number is, but it's the last three digits. And I'll do my little example. Here's my 6468. I only care about the end of it, the 468 part. There it is. Uh, is that divisible by eight? That's again kind of hard. Is it triply even then? So is it even? Can I divide by two? Can I divide by two? Can I divide by two? So a little harder, but I think you could do that in your head. But let's try it. 468, 234 for halving it. And then can I halve it again? 117. Uh, so I've halved it once, I've halved it twice. I think I'm going to get stuck. So it's not divisible by eight because it wasn't triply even. This video was supported by Jane Street, a research driven trading firm based out of all the great cities like New York, Hong Kong and London. Now they're supporting us because some of the people at Jane Street enjoy watching Numberphile, but they also think the sort of people watching like you are the curious and creative types that might be a good fit to work with them. One of the great ways you can do that is through their internship program. And the next round of those are actually being advertised as we speak. There's a link on the screen, but I'll also put all the stuff you need in the video description so you can check it out. Have a look people, this could be the first step for you to an amazing and exciting international career. And our thanks to the people at Jane Street for supporting Numberphile. Divisibility. I thought it'd be just be nice to do a recap of um, divisibility. Well, say that again. I thought it'd just be nice to do a recap of divisibility. Oh, oh! This is turning into good bonus material. <laughs> I've discovered a word I can't say.